So we're in week 11, and just to do the thing we always do at the beginning of the videos, this is what you should be doing this week. You have some assignments under week 11, and uh, those assignments are... Your Google bookmarks. That's it. Totally easy for assignments. And then week 12, you're going to do a little bit of JavaScript programming. Same with week 13, week 14. And you got like three weeks of JavaScript programming. And then we kind of stop at week 15 with assignments. So you got 16, 17, last two weeks for finals week, just to kind of get your game together for the last part of the semester. But we're in 11, week 11, so we got 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We got seven more weeks together. It's pretty cool, not too bad. But we're definitely halfway through, so make sure that you're staying up with all this stuff. And extra credit, of course, and if you're in the online class, you want to do the discussion for week 11. And in my IT lab, that was week one. This was two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So you should be in access, the second one, take the exam for that. And, uh, and then in exams down here, take chapter 11 and do, you should have already done the lab test for Word and Excel, right? And, uh, and then that's it for this week. So that's what you should be doing. Uh, we're going to talk about the web and apps and then also a little bit about multimedia. That's week 10 and 11 of lectures. How many people get value out of the lectures? Let me see your hands. You like learning a little something just from my mouth, but not more than like 15 minutes worth. Raise your hand. <laughs> Generally, that's about what people tolerate. And if you look at the YouTube metrics of like my videos, after 15 minutes, nobody's watching anymore. <laughs> so I figured that's just what people could tolerate, 15 minutes. What do you want to know about websites and apps and multimedia, images, those kinds of things? What do you want to know? Coders, tune in. Everybody turn, turn your monitor sideways for 15 minutes till the 55. And when we get to the 11, when the big hand's on the 11, it's a joke. When we get to 55, <laughs> right, you can do whatever you want. You can turn your monitors back, but let's just talk for 15 minutes. So I've got slides and notes, and I can teach you some of the basics of websites. But web is kind of like my baby. It's what I do. And uh, it's only been my baby for three years. It was my baby 2001 to 2005, but I threw it behind a dumpster and you know, not what you want to do with your baby. I, I had other job duties, right? So my job shifted from the web, teaching web stuff in 2005. But then in 2013, I had the opportunity to get back into it. And so I've doubled down on that. And I've just thrown myself into learning to code and learning as much as I can about the web. And, and I feel like, oh, I've learned so much now. And I know what's current. I know what to use. And I know how to use it. Right, and I'm, I do this great class on HTML and CSS where already, right, you know, here's the book that like one of the big publishers gives, and just for the online class, since you can't see what I just held up, um, Amazon.com <sighs> Web Design with HTML5 and CSS3, uh, Shelley Cashman. So it's this book right here, right? So this is like a book that most schools would adopt to teach. And I go through this book, and they're teaching a whole bunch of stuff, which is already outdated. And we've already covered everything in this book. And it's just not put together well, except for like, a, like maybe eight pages. There's like eight little things I need to teach to the students in my HTML, CSS class, which I've dog-eared. And just so you could see kind of like, you know, what, you know, you could, what we're doing in that class, week 11, a little bit more than halfway through the semester. Um, I'll show you a site that I put together over the weekend. Uh, which one to show you first? Nice. Full page, background, it's responsive. It's got a little nav up on the top. We could add a little bit more functionality to it to make it a little bit better.
So we do iterations in the code to kind of improve it. So I've added a few little icons up here, which when you hover over them, there's a slight color change. You could see that maybe. And as you hover over this, you get a slight color change to show, hey, I'm paying attention. I know where you're at. You wanted to click on this. We have some interactivity. And as we, we slide this down, right, it changes. And then we get these buttons down here for mobile. So you lost the buttons up top. Right, so it's responsive and it has media queries. Those buttons are going to go away. Right, and then they're down here at the bottom. So you see this. You come to the website on your phone, that's what you see. And we could preview that on a phone by just going into Developer's Console and then saying right here, hey, show me the mobile version of that phone. And I could say here, uh, fit to window. So there's the mobile version. And there are my buttons down there. Right, if I'd clicked one, that's what it'd look like. That's what it looks like on a Nexus 5. I could say, what's it look like in landscape mode? It's not one to scroll. I gotta fix that. That's because it went to these buttons up here, right? Landscape mode. That works. That works for me. And so that being able to do something like that. is uh, not a lot of people are teaching how to do that right. And what is right? So a lot of people build their websites with divs. Like if we go and we look at Reddit, and we just look at like right click and choose inspect, or we could choose view page source. View page source will show us all of the code jammed together. Sometimes it's formatted. But there's all that code. I could get it and put it into my editor and format it and read it more. But here, my browser will format it for me. Chrome will. So these are developer tools. But if I look at this code, div, 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 div is a divider. It's a tag. You guys have been learning some HTML and CSS with uh, Code Academy, right? But like div is the old school way of building websites. And the new way is to use semantic HTML. And semantic HTML are, instead of using div, you use tags which have meaning. That's semantics, meaning. Semantics means meaning, right? So if we look up semantic, semantic is relating to meaning in language or logic. So instead of just using a bunch of divs, we use things like header, footer, section, article, nav. And we use those tags to build our site. But a lot of people aren't doing that. Because they got their site up and running. They're already successful. Their developers learned it with divs. You know, to change the site would be a lot of work. So keep it going. You know? So my goal is to teach current modern best practices as of today to show people how to build websites. They'll build their websites using the technology they learn and then hopefully become successful and and it'll become outdated in five years, and people will be like, oh, you're still using header tags <laughs> or not. You know, but that's just the nature of the game a little bit as you leave school. So there's some, the semantic HTML, and then there's also other stuff that we do. Like instead of downloading, you know, boot crap, and I've showed you boot crap, right? Bootstrap, remember I changed it? You guys remember that? So here's like, you know, a tool you could use called Bootstrap, which a lot of people use some sort of a framework to help them build sites. But if you know how to write HTML and CSS, just write the HTML and CSS. Don't take somebody else's abstraction and implement it just because it makes it that a little bit easier for you. Because ultimately it makes your code bloated, which increases download wait times for your customers, which results in a bad user experience, which results in frustrated customers and less customers and less click-throughs and less sales. You got to be lightning fast on the web. People don't like waiting a second. You need to be under a second. Everything's loaded. It's functional. It just has to pop up, right? How many people have had that experience? You're like, I'm going to go look at Reddit. <sighs> screw that site. <laughs> it's about that long, right? It's like, what is going on? Two seconds, screw that site. You're out of there. You're like, that's going to take forever. I can't stand waiting. You know? And so, you know, instead of using that, you know, you go to a site like Can I Use, which kind of shows you all of the things which are current, and you learn about like Flexbox, 
right? Oh, I could use Flexbox for my layout. 95% of browsers will support that. Cool, I'm losing 4% of the market. What 4%? Uh, people who are on IE8 and IE9 are going to have problems with it, right? Ah, screw them. They should have updated. They're not my, they're not my market base. If I'm Google, I need to access everybody. All right, but you know, if it's just like I'm putting a site together, 96% of the market, cool, I'm using Flexbox. And Flexbox will let you do it, Bootcrap won't. Or exactly the same thing as Bootcrap. Question? Sure, it'll include Flexbox, probably. But do you want to know Flexbox or you want to let somebody else know Flexbox and then you'll know how to use the tool that they built on top of it? And then you'll have to download all that extra code. Right? Same with like jQuery, right? People are like, oh, jQuery makes code so much easier. Right? Well, there's this joke that people created, vanilla JS. It's a new framework. It's just plain old vanilla JavaScript. No, no jQuery, no, no framework library that you have to download. And why would you want to download it? Because it's like millions of times faster than jQuery. So JavaScript can do 12 million operations a second. jQuery can do 350,000. And I know it runs on the client side, and maybe all that doesn't make that much of a difference. But again, your code's getting bloated. It got bloated with bootcrap. It got bloated with jQuery. It got bloated with font awesome. Pretty soon you're downloading, you know, megabytes to people's phone. And they're paying for that data, and it's taking a long time to load, and your site isn't quick and performant. And your users get frustrated because they don't like to wait just like you, and they go away. Right? So you don't use jQuery. You just use straight out vanilla JavaScript, so you don't have to download all that other stuff. Likewise, you could go to like Fawn Awesome, and you could download all of Fawn Awesome to somebody's phone. Maybe the other websites have already done it, so it's already cached on their phone or on their computer, so oh, it's actually not getting downloaded. Everybody uses it, so it's already there. Well, maybe, right? Or instead of using Fawn Awesome, with a little bit of like learning, 30 minutes, 45 minute lesson from me in my, one of my classes. I'll show you how to take each icon from Font Awesome, turn it into an SVG, scalable vector graphic, which will totally scale, brother. Right? So it doesn't matter how small or how big, the resolution is crisp. It doesn't matter how much pixel density you have, right? If it's retina screen or something else, you know, your pixel density, your actual physical pixels versus the device independent pixels versus CSS pixels. And what's the difference between all those? What's the why would you include the meta viewport tag, right? Device width, width equals device width. What's that mean? But, you know, here's Fawn Awesome in action, right? Like I've included Fawn Awesome here. But now somebody has to download all of Fawn Awesome for this code to work, you know, for them to see it. They have to go get all of Fawn Awesome. How big is that? I don't know. Let's go find out. Well, hell, I have it right here. CSS, font awesome, men, reveal and finder, 27 kilobytes. Okay, so it's not huge. It's 27 kilobytes. Okay. But I want, all I want is four icons. And so now, I could do this instead. I could just put that in. So 27 kilobytes, right? Here I've got two of them. Let's put that into a file. Just SVGs. Two kilobytes. Whack, 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 whack. So instead of downloading 27 kilobytes, two kilobytes. And 
And when I put that into my code, it looks like this. Well, it looks crazy. That's some crazy looking stuff. Right? But all those are basically like geometry, like x, y value kind of things, slightly different. They have a little nomenclature in there to say go from this point to that point or whatever. All right? But it's just drawing a path. So as I as I use as I use SVGs. Right, there's, there, there's my SVG, and here the width, height, let's see, where am I doing? Style sheet main, added in some color. But let's say instead of 555, I wanted this to be, uh, what's that, doubled? 12 and 1, 10, 13, 10. And this is a thousand plus one ten, eleven ten. Cool. Or I don't know, two 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 zero and twenty six twenty. It is always crisp. Do that with a JPEG. You're going to see all the pixelization. You want to see what I mean? And I'm not importing any style sheets here, so I'm going to import a style sheet. Actually, I don't need that. You could just do it right here. So this picture is. Four hundred by two sixty seven. Okay, so there's width four hundred, height two sixty seven. So there's that image. Let me make that bigger. Uh, not looking so good. So JPEGs pixelate. Because they're all made up of pixels. If we kept coming in on that, right? That's like all blown up. You could actually start to see the squares a little bit. There's a square right here. See it? Square right there. So if you put that into Photoshop, you really see it. So that's like JPEG, which is a pixel-based image. They call it bitmap. You're mapping bits. See, 15 minutes. I lost you guys. You're mapping bits versus a vector image like an SVG, scalable vector graphic. It just keeps redrawing the image from those points, so it's always crisp. You have to create SVGs, and SVGs aren't appropriate for every situation. So for an image with pictures, not, not appropriate. But for icons, like uh, you know, like these up here, SVG is great.
So I have a class in the fall, CIT 90, and uh, it shows you how to do the back end of websites in that class. I'll be using the Go programming language to do that. And uh, you could sign up for that class. Starts in August, right, when the fall semester starts. We're also going to be doing a Go Bridge event. And uh, Go Bridge is to increase access to underrepresented communities. And um, I got to find the link here. You go to this website here, Bridge Troll. And, uh, and this is pending approval. I just submitted it. But on September 3rd, 4th, 10th, and 11th, I'll be teaching people how to use the Go programming language. So if you're taking my Go programming class, you'll learn it in August, just the language fundamentals. And then we'll do this here over the weekends. And you'll be able to come to those and reinforce everything you learned. And then September, October, November, you'll learn how to do web programming on the back end with Go. And so some of what that looks like is this. And, uh, you know, so here's a Tim file. And um, I'm just going to, that's kind of cool. Put in a Go file. And I can call this whatever I want. Uh, actually, I'm going to call this main, funk main. And uh, HTTP, listen and serve. How many people are still interested? Raise your hand. Three people. So the rest of you were 11.50 or 5. What, we hit the 11, so you could do whatever you want. So HTTP, listen and serve is, is uh, what? The coders are turning away? You, you set your route, and then you set where you want that to run. And then I do a func index and response HTTP response writer. And uh, request a pointer to an HTTP request, and then put in my brackets. And now I could start putting code in here. So I could do a format f print and re do the response back to the client. And I could put some code in here, and the code could be like h1. What's up? So I'm writing back the very basics of a web page, web, web page. And now when I run this, change in O O and go run main. What did I forget? Oh, here we go. I need a colon eighty eighty there, nil here, and HTTP handle funk here, and that's where I do my pattern. All right, there we go. So take a second, fire up. What's up? And I could just start putting more HTML in here. So I'll be in the spring, in the fall, and in the spring we'll be running HTML and CSS again. So if you want to learn more about it, totally welcome. Anybody have questions? How many people want to learn yet more? Raise your hand. 
gone from 20 students, 3, 6, 10, 11, 15, 18, 21 to 2. <laughs> so a little bit more information, just briefly kind of go through this. When you build a web website, why websites versus apps? That's a really good question. So I, I recommend learning how to build websites versus apps because apps, study show, most people use 5 to 10 apps, closer to 5. And you think about your own experience. How many people use over 10 apps in this room? You have more than 10 apps which you regularly use. One person, right? How many people less than five? Raise your hand. Pretty much everybody. A lot of people aren't raising their hand. So, so you know, but a website, how many people go to more than 10 web, different websites a month or a day, right? No problem. And so, so websites are kind of like meeting somebody on the bus. You'll talk to them. No big deal. But an app is kind of like inviting them over for dinner. Like, you really think about it. <laughs> I don't know if I want to invite this dude over for dinner. I don't know if I want to install the software on my phone, right? But a website, hey, no big deal. I'll look at that. So I think the web is still the place to be if you want to innovate and create new applications. Like, the top 25 apps have, like, 98% of the business. And so unless you're a Fortune 100 company that's going to spend tons of money making your app successful, or you have a niche following already and you're going to make an app to serve them, I don't recommend apps. I recommend learning the web to reach people. Uh, so that's my first thought on websites versus apps. And when you build a website, there's the front end and the back end. So the Go class in the fall will be the back end. That's what you just saw. Like how do I program the server to deal with everything? And the front end is what you saw before that with how does it look. That's the HTML and CSS. Um, so sometimes they talk about writing the code for the back end as server-side scripting. And client-side scripting on the front end, the holy trinity is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So JavaScript allows the functionality on the front end of an app. So this was all built with JavaScript. This website is all JavaScript. Even though it writes HTML and CSS, uh, it's all JavaScript. This might be a little loud. In my line of work, you got to keep repeating things over and over and over again for the truth to sink in. It's all JavaScript. I built that over the summer just as a project for teaching myself more about JavaScript. So that's client side scripting, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, JavaScript is the front end. You know, there's a lot to know about it. And I could help you get into it if you're interested in it. And if you do get into it, there's good opportunities in it. And it's fun. And none of you consciously remember this, but when you learned to crawl, you fell down, you hit your head a lot. And it hurt. But you wanted to walk. You wanted to move. So you learned to crawl, and then you learned to stand up, and then finally you learned to walk, and now you're mobile like everybody else. And when you learn to code, at first you're kind of like falling down and hitting your head a lot, and it hurts. And it's frustrating. And you got everybody else is walking. Why, how come I'm not walking? Well, it takes a little time. But if you put in that time, at the end of it, you're going to be walking or coding just like everybody else, and it'll be second nature to you. And then you're going to be able to build stuff. And it won't be a question anymore, can I build this? It'll be more like, yeah, let's build that. You know, it'll be fun. You get to build things. There's no other career opportunity where you have the potential to reach 2 billion people. Study business, open a shop at Fashion Fair, great. You'll, you'll have 200,000 past your shop a year. 2 billion online. That's like a factor of magnitude of like 
I don't know, whatever, right? The multiplication. Anyhow, I can't speak highly enough about it. How many people want to know more? <laughs> I like it. I'm down to one hand. Let's stop while we're ahead. So uh, if you have any questions, just ask me. Either now, any questions now, or later. I want you all to take a minute and just in your group, talk to your group. This is what you want to do when you're done with your education. Okay? So just in your group right now, take a minute and talk to your group. This is what I want to do for a career professionally. This is how I'm going to make rent and pay my bills.